Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Um, today's tutorial is going to be on how to install the BL Touch on a CR10 Mini. Um, we're going to use the Marlin Firmware 2.0 and burn the bootloader using an Arduino Uno. So first of all, um, we have to disassemble the um, case that holds all of the electronics. So I'm going to start by taking off the uh, spool holder. Then we'll go ahead and uh, remove the screws from the bottom. Uh, there should be five of them. Uh, and they use a uh, hex key. I think it is a size... Um, I think it's a three millimeter. All right, now we're going to remove the power supply screws there on the side of the uh, housing. And then uh, once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and lift out the power supply. And you kind of just tilt it up towards the uh, um, USB side and then just kind of hang it over. Now you probably want to prop something underneath it uh, just so that there's not a too much uh, strain on that um, wire that's holding it there. So now we're going to remove the LCD screen connector. Um, unfortunately mine had some hot glue so uh, that was kind of a pain. Um, I tried to dig it out a little bit but I think in the end the easiest method was to just remove the entire motherboard. Because we need those uh, six pins right there. Um, that's how we're going to be burning the bootloader later on in the video. All right, finally got the LCD screen connector out. But there's still a ton of glue down in the connector, so. Yeah, you don't want to bend the pins, but uh, digging it out didn't really work too well, so. Your mileage may vary. All right, so there's four screws to remove the main board out of the housing. And then uh, I would mark those two connectors because they look the same. So you want to make sure that when you take it out, you're going to put them back in the same spot. And then just loosen all these screws to pull out the wires. Make sure you note down which wire goes in which hole. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, go ahead and download the Marlin Firmware 2.0. Uh, you can click the download link, but I like to go to the website so I can make sure it's uh, the most current release. So just download the zip file. And then next we're going to um, download the Arduino IDE. And I'll put links to all of uh, these sites in the video description, so you should be able to find what you need. Um, obviously, I'm using Windows 10, so I'm going to pick the Windows installer and click Just Download. I'll just save that to the desktop for now. Okay, and then once it's downloaded, we're going to go ahead and install it. It's a pretty painless install. Screen went black because uh, user account control or whatever Windows has. Um, easy install, just click next, 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 install. I've sped up the footage so you didn't have to wait for the install in real time. 
it's going to ask you to install some components um, here towards the end. Just uh, click install on all three of them. And there you have it, Arduino's installed. But we're going to go ahead and extract the Marlin firmware. You can use 7-zip or WinRAR, but I just use the uh, default Windows Extract tool just to, you know, make sure everybody's covered. And there we go. So go ahead and open that folder if it didn't open already. And this is where the main firmware is um, stored, but we're going to take some uh, configuration files specific to my printer which is the CR10 Mini. And it's made by Creality. Creato, I don't know how to say that because I can't read it. Um, just copy all the four files that are in the uh, CR10 Mini folder or whatever printer you have. Uh, this tutorial will probably work on any of the Creality printers. And then just paste it in the main Marlin firmware folder. It's going to ask you to overwrite a couple files. Just go ahead and overwrite them. And then we'll open up uh, the Arduino IDE by double clicking on the Marlin um, INO file. And let's go ahead and uh, add a new board to the Arduino IDE. This is a Sangrino board for, uh, it's basically the Arduino variant of board that's inside my CR10 Mini. So you can just um, copy and paste the URL that's in the uh, video description and paste it into the additional boards section. And hit OK. And so now we have to go to the board manager under the tools and search for Sangrino and install it. And this should only take a second. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and plug in our Arduino Uno. Um, we're going to basically turn this into a uh, device that can flash the bootloader on our um, main board for our 3D printer. So we're going to change our board to an Arduino Uno, change to the Arduino Uno's port, and we're going to open example sketch. Um, it's under the Arduino ISP number 11 and click that go ahead and minimize the other screen and we can go ahead and upload this sketch to our Arduino Uno and it's done uploading pretty simple just make sure you didn't get any errors when doing that now we're going to wire up the um, ISP wires for the Sanguino and the Arduino Uno. And you can go back and pause the video to see which wires go to where, but it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio um, except for one wire, the reset wire. Um, the reset wire will go from the um, CR10's main board to the Arduino's digital pin 10. So um, everything else is uh, one to one. So MISO to MISO, MOSI to MOSI, uh, 5 volt to 5 volt, ground to ground, uh, S clock to S clock. So and the reason why we need to do this uh, bootloader burn is because the even though the CR10's main board is technically an Arduino capable board, 
Uh, it doesn't have a bootloader, so it won't work in the Arduino IDE. But uh, after we do this, it'll basically show up just like any other Arduino, and we can flash the firmware uh, pretty easily. So um, there are newer versions of this board, uh, version 2.0. Um, I believe that do already have a bootloader installed. Um, so you wouldn't need to do this part of the process on those boards. But uh, um, I mean, you can try to flash the firmware, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, and if it doesn't work, then it probably is because it doesn't have uh, the bootloader. So we're just plugging in the uh, reset pin to uh, digital pin 10 on the Arduino right there. And just showing you the wire, so uh, you can see which colors go to which side of the connector. Okay, so now I'm going to open up the device manager so we can see which COM port um, each of the boards are going to connect to. <clears throat> so we're going to first plug in the uh, CR10 Mini's main board. And it should show up in a minute under the ports, COM, and LT LPT. And we got COM7. So now we know which COM port uh, is associated with that board. So we want to make sure we get this part right. So we're going to go to Tools. We're going to select our uh, Sanguino. We're going to set our port to the... Well, actually, we're not going to set our port to the um, COM port of the Sanguino. We're going to actually plug in the Arduino Uno now. And that will show up with another port here in a second. There we go. So it showed up as COM6. So now we want to select COM6. Uh, mine automatically selected that one, so that's fine. And we'll go into the... Uh, to minimize that, we'll go into the um, port just to make sure everything's set correctly. Um, and then we'll set the processor to the uh, at mega 20 or 1284 the 16 megahertz variant and then we'll go down and set the programmer to the arduino as isp don't pick the arduino isp arduino as isp and then all we have to do is just burn the bootloader so we'll go back up to tools Burn bootloader. And it's a pretty quick process. It's actually done now. So now the bootloader is installed on the uh, CR10's main board. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything connected back up in inside my chassis since I had to take it out because of the glue. So um, we're going to plug everything back in except for the Z end stop. And tweezers weren't really very helpful here, but whatever. So we'll just leave that hanging for now. Now we're going to grab our uh, wire that came with our BL Touch kit. And we're going to take this end of the connector and we're going to plug the red connector, the two wire um, connector, back into where the Z end stop was plugged in. And get my fingers to work. And then the leftover connector, the three pin connector, will need this adapter, which plugs into the um, LCD connector. It's kind of like a pass through with uh, some extra pins. 
Now, one thing I did notice because of the pass through, it did make my LCD a little bit less contrasty um, because there is some power being siphoned off for the BL touch. So you'll want to make sure you get the orientation of the uh, actual sensor wire um, correct. Um, I, on mine, the yellow pin was the actual um, sensor wire, and then the red was the VCC, and the blue was the ground. And then we'll go ahead and plug in the LCD again. Simple as that. So now we're going to pull out the Z end stop cable that we don't need anymore. We're just going to pull it uh, straight through the uh, mesh sleeve that it was um, going through. And once we get that out, we're going to take the other end of the BL touches sensor wire, which has five connections on it. We're going to shove that back through where where we pulled out the old Z end stop wire. And this was kind of tricky, just try not to bend the wire, try to keep it as straight as you can, and then kind of, uh, yeah, just kind of force it through. All right, so now let's uh, get everything put back together on the control unit. So we're gonna put the power supply back in, just put it under that lip first and then lower it in, it should go in pretty smoothly. Just make sure you don't uh, disconnect any wires. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up here because it's basically just the reverse of getting it open. So we're gonna plug in the four screws on the side. I'm having a little trouble with it, with this orientation, so I'm gonna flip it up on its side. There we go. So pretty easy once you know what you're doing. Um, this did take me all day to get installed uh, and edit this video and get everything uh, set up correctly. So. Uh, if you like this video, if it helped you out, make sure you like and subscribe and all that junk. Because it did take me a lot of time to get this information out. And I couldn't find uh, any firmware on Creality's website that allowed me to just use the BL Touch for the CR10 Mini. Um, some of the other variants had specialized firmware for it, but um, mine didn't. So I'm going to use the Marlin firmware to do that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna actually install the BL Touch. So uh, we got the other end of the wire with the five connectors. This is the part that's gonna go into the BL Touch itself. And we're gonna need some things here. We're gonna need to take out these um, screws out of the fan housing. There's just two of them. And these, these screws just save them to the side. Um, they can't be used to attach the um, bracket that holds the BL Touch because they're a little too short. So there's some screws that came with the kit that are um, eight millimeters. So there's the bracket and there's the BL Touch. And there's the, oh, okay, six millimeter screws. I was wrong. Oh, okay, yeah. So the six millimeter screws are to attach the BL Touch to the bracket itself. And you'll want to do this first because it's kind of a pain um, to uh, try to put these screws up underneath it when the bracket's already attached. So I would recommend installing the BL Touch to the bracket before attaching the bracket to um, the fan housing. And you want to get them tight but uh, because you don't want it wiggling around because it'll give you 
inaccurate results, but obviously don't tighten them too tight because you don't want to crack the plastic because uh, these BL Touch sensors are quite spendy. So now we will actually use the eight millimeter screws to fasten the bracket to um, the fan housing where we took out those two six millimeter screws. Um, I would recommend also plugging it in before trying to attach it because it is a little tight spot. So it'll be hard to get that um, connector plugged in properly. Uh, if you had it already fastened. It's as simple as that. All right, now the eight millimeter screws. And it'll probably be helpful to have a magnetic tip for your uh, whatever tool you're using to tighten in those screws. Um, luckily mine hung on just barely, but it's not magnetic, but I think that would probably be a, a little bit more helpful because it's kind of a pain to hold all three of these things together and get the screw in. But I was able to eventually accomplish it. And again, you want to get these tight, but not too tight because any play or movement that you have in the BL Touch will cause inconsistent results when, when you're probing the bed. And there's another screw underneath there. I couldn't, or I didn't get a good shot of it, but uh, basically you're just putting the screws back in. Uh, Kind of where they were before, so. All right. Now I'm just going to do some uh, tidying up and cable management. Um, your printer may have zip ties on it, and actually the kit came with zip ties, but uh, because I change things. Um, on a regular basis, or I know I will in the future, I like to use these uh, Velcro cable ties. Make things a little bit easier um, to change things out later. It would probably be nice to get one of those uh, coil wraps for all of these wires and just have everything in one of those coil, um, plastic coil things. I don't know if, what they're called, but um, they kind of surround the entire set of wires, so uh, make it look a little nicer. But All right, so now we're going to go ahead and go back into the Marlin firmware. We're going to get everything set up for that. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is obviously we're going to plug in our um, Sanguino and uh, make sure that the processor's the correct one. It's the 16 megahertz variant. Uh, change to our port. Uh, you want to make sure that the programmer is back to the AVR ISP, um, just in case it's uh, still using the Arduino as an ISP. And then we're going to do a test upload. The reason why I'm doing this is because we should get an error if, since this is a new install. And the error that we're getting is basically that we do not have the libraries uh, associated with the LCD. So I'm going to show you how to get those um, or that library. So I'm just going to control C and copy the uh, U8 glib name and then we're going to go over to sketch 
include library and manage libraries. And we're going to search for the uh, U8G lib. And I wouldn't recommend trying anything else, even though they may work. Uh, just get the UG8, uh, U8G lib uh, by Oliver and click install. And then just close out. And then we'll go ahead and try uh, another upload just to see if we get any other errors. I'm speeding this up so you don't have to sit here and watch it compile in real time. So it's probably sped up uh, four times or so. And it looks like it's going to uh, complete successfully the second round. It's uploading to the um, motherboard of the 3D printer now. And it completed successfully. So we are ready to go. Um, most of the configuration is going to take place in the configuration H tab or the configuration uh, ADV.H tab. Um, change the Z min probe end stop um, from false to true for the inverting. It's the uh, BL touch is a little different than the normal end stop that came with the printer. And it says I have some updates available, but you can just ignore those. Um, we're going to go ahead and uncomment the uh, line for the BL touch to basically enable the BL touch. And then we're going to search for the uh, minimum software end stop. Uh, this is basically so that we can go into the negatives with our Z axis. Uh, that'll be later. Um, uncomment the uh, define the auto bed leveling for bilinear. Uh, we're going to uncomment the define Z safe homing. And basically what this does is it allows it to home in the center of the bed instead of off to the um, side so that the sensor will definitely hit the bed. Now we're going to go to the configuration underscore ADV dot H. And we're going to search for baby step Z probe offset. And we're going to uncomment that. And I also uncomment the baby step uh, Z probe GFX overlay, give you more information on the LCD. And then we are going to change the uh, uh, multiplicator for the Z um, baby steps from 1 to 10. And that'll just make it go a little bit faster. And then this is uh, my preference. Um, I There's not enough space on the motherboard for this firmware. And so I've disabled the SD card. Um, I don't use the SD card, so I use uh, uh, Octopi. Um, but uh, in the comment or in the description below, I'll have some other things that you can disable alternatively. Um, so we're going to do a verify real quick to make sure that everything is adding up correctly for our firmware. Uh, we still need to set uh, the uh, nozzle to probe offset, which is in the center of the screen now. Um, but we'll have to get some uh, measurements to uh, see what we need to put in there. So uh, right now we're using 97% of our st uh, storage space on our motherboard. All right, so we now need to measure the uh, distance on our x-axis. Um, you want to pull down the little probe arm from the BL touch and measure from that arm to the center of the nozzle. And it's a little weird to see this on camera. Um, the measurements don't exactly line up, but I'm getting about 45 millimeters. And that's for the x-axis. 
And next we want to do the same thing with the y-axis. So we want to measure the offset from the middle of the nozzle to the plunger on the BL touch. Getting about 9 or 10. And now we're going to get the uh, offset for the Z um, axis. So we want to auto home the bed first. And once that's homed in, I'm just going to do one test. And then it'll do another one. And then it will sit at some predefined height. And what we want to do now is uh, move the z-axis to zero. And we'll do it the 0 0.1 millimeter increments. So just move it all the way to zero. And it takes a while at the 0 0.1 millimeters, but just keep going. Okay, almost there. All right, so now we want to grab a piece of paper. Um, I like using a post-it note. Um, they're just a standard size and you want to slide it under there and then start going into the negatives until it slightly grips the piece of paper. I like to have it where it grips the paper but I can still push it forward and back without um, bending the paper. So it's it's got you know tension with it but it's not ripping the paper, it's not digging into it. I can push it forward and back like that. See I can go kind of side to side and forward and back without tearing or ripping the paper and I got negative 2.8. So let's go ahead and plug in the numbers that we got for our offsets. So for our X we got uh, negative 45 and Y I got negative 9 and for the Z I got negative 2.8 and if you look above there's a diagram that tells you whether you're negative or positive or what side of the nozzle your probe is so if you have some different setup um, or it's in a different location or whatever um, you can use that diagram above to um, see how you need to you know whether you need a positive number or a negative number so let's go ahead and I think we are ready to upload our final version of our firmware. Oh, right. We need to um, turn off the uh, or uncomment the define minimum end stop for Z so we can't go negative anymore. And then we'll do the final upload. And again, I've sped this up um, probably about three or four times, so you don't need to sit through the entire process, but it takes about, uh, about two or three minutes to fully do this upload. All right, let's power it on. I'm plugging mine into uh, my Octopi. Um, it's kind of a 3D printer server software. I'll probably do a video on that one of these days. Um, but we want to just make sure everything boots up. But if you notice, uh, my screen seems kind of dim. I think that's because of the adapter where we have the BL Touch sensor wires passing through. All right, let's get a uh, test object to 3D print. Um, I just typed in bed level test on uh, uh, Thingiverse. Grabbed one that looked good. I liked that one. I'll put a link uh, to it in the description. And then for my slicer, I used the Prusa slicer. 
I've used Cura, I've used a few others, but I think uh, Prusa Slicer is my favorite. It's got lots of options and um, it's just real nice at uh, getting quality prints out of it. So I'm going to import our object and obviously mine is too big for my bed. So we'll go ahead and scale it down a little bit. And we want to go pretty big, but we don't want to go all the way to the edges because uh, the clips that hold on the glass are there. So I went with 65%. Um, which actually ends up being a problem when I try to slice it. Let's, uh, I need to turn off the... Uh, loops for my um, skirt. I typically do five just to make sure I've got the proper flow and adhesion but for this we'll just do one perimeter and uh, I got an error right here because there's basically no layers because I've shrunk the Z axis down to 65% as well as the X and Y so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unlock that and change uh, the or the Z back to 100%, so it's a full layer. This test is only one layer thick, so we want to make sure we get that right. So I've sliced it. Now I'm going to send the G code over to my Octopi server. I'm going to name it 01 just to uh, you know if we need to do multi multiple of these just to you know have different versions in there. So it's uh, received the instructions to print on the Octoprint. And uh, let's see how this first print goes. Um, this will be the first print with the uh, BL Touch and uh, this firmware. So let's see if it is successful. Just got to wait for it to heat up. And this is uh, just PLA, white PLA, some basic uh, no-name brand. Um, I've sped it up so you don't have to wait for the probing process because it does take a minute. But um, it checks uh, nine points on the bed. And then it will automatically adjust. Um, if one corner is higher than the other, it'll uh, actively adjust while it's printing. So... Um, the cool thing about it doing the probing is it typically will have enough time to probe and heat up to about 210 degrees or so um, in the time that it took to um, probe it. So usually it starts to print relatively quick after it's done probing. And there are many options that you can go in there and tweak. You can have it uh, probe each point multiple times. You can have it uh, probe more grid points. I tried it on uh, 25 grid points, but uh, it took quite a long time to do that. So <laughs> it's kind of up to you how long you want it to probe. But I mean, the more probing you do, the more accurate your bed leveling will be. Um, there's yeah tons and tons of options in the marlin firmware i really like it so um mess around with it um you know you might have to tweak your i don't know your z offset uh to get better adhesion uh, i typically print on uh painter's tape so this is actually one of the first times i've ever printed directly on glass and it uh came out looking pretty good I didn't have quite enough. I didn't have my roll uh, of PLA hooked up to my um, printer, so I had to feed some more in so that I could finish this print. But yeah, everything went good. All right, if this uh, video helped you out in any way or whatnot, if you just uh, liked watching it, give me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon with more tutorials. Thanks for watching.